We're going carbon fiber. Now, when it comes to a printer like the Ender 3, the heaviest part of the build is going to be your Y axis. You got this big aluminum plate and you got this big aluminum gantry. I'm just going to call it a gantry because it's just easier to say it that way. But this is kind of heavy. And the thing is, an object in motion likes to stay in motion. So when the motors kick it backwards for its movement, it wants to keep moving in that direction. It's going to take some electricity and power to tell the motors to stop. The more weight that this is, the more power it's going to take to stop. Think of it like a big, heavy vehicle. The heavier the vehicle, the better the brakes have to be in order to come to a stop. Likewise, the lighter a vehicle is, the less power you need to accelerate to begin with. And that is where this comes in. This is a carbon fiber skeletonized Y-axis gantry, and this is significantly lighter. Therefore, when we configure our input shaping, that's going to be done by this ADXL345 up here. This is an accelerometer that Clipper uses to measure resonant frequencies. Now, the idea is the resonant frequencies should be better with less weight, but how much weight less is this? Well, let's figure that out. We're going to measure all of this in grams. So, the y-axis gantry that is stock weighs 152 grams. All right. The carbon fiber skeletonized version weighs 43 grams. Wow. That's impressive. This is also way more stiff which is going to be perfect for the style of bed leveling that we use. Tension mounts, as I like to call them. This is the gantry fully installed. It's moving pretty good. Everything bolted up quite nicely. So let's get our build plate back on. Well, wouldn't you know it, I went to adjust the Y-axis end stop and I broke the mounts. So I'll have to print a new one. How am I going to do that when my printer is uh, out of commission. And that's where today's video sponsor comes in, AMFM Plumbing. Do you live in the greater Chicagoland area and have a leaky pipe? Is your residential or commercial property in need of maintenance? Or even if you have an emergency in the dead of night, AMFM Plumbing is there to help with 24-hour assistance. Owned and operated by a master plumber with over 30 years of experience in the field, fully licensed, bonded, and insured with tons of five-star reviews on Google, you can rest assured that AMFM Plumbing will be in tune with all your plumbing needs. Thanks to our sponsor, I now have an X1 Carbon. So this is what I use to rapidly prototype or rapidly print parts for things that I break around the house. New bracket printed and installed. It's at this point you might be wondering to yourself, how do you take advantage of a lighter weight bed? Well, that's the thing. Uh, you have to be running Clipper in order to do this, but uh, what we're using is known as an ADX Cell 345. And it's just an accelerometer that hooks up via your Raspberry Pi and this will allow us to measure the resonant frequencies and calculate what we need in order to compensate for said resonant frequencies. With Clipper, we can test resonance frequencies automatically, which is great. And we're going to be able to see the graphs of before with the old y-axis gantry and the graphs with the new y-axis gantry. So all we're going to do is run Shaper Calibrate Axis Y. I don't know if you can read that. And it's going to uh, shake the bed back and forth from a frequency between 1 and 130-ish hertz. By testing those frequencies, we can figure out how to compensate for them. Now, I'm not going to go into a ton of detail on how to read these graphs because there are people out there that can explain this 
way better and in way more detail than I can. But if you look at it, our peaks and our valleys are way different. The chart on the left peaks out at 2.5 power spectral density, and the graph on the right peaks at about 2. So keep that in mind, they're not at the exact same scale, but by looking at these graphs and comparing and contrasting, you can see the peaks and valleys are much less pronounced. So we're using less to achieve what we need, which is great. Now, what kind of modification would be done without printing a Benchy? So far, it's going pretty good. A few things I want to note about this build plate that may be a potential extra benefit. I use what I like to affectionately refer to as tension mounts. It's really just jam nuts that allow you to maintain a perfect level without it moving around like it does on springs or anything else, right? So one of the things is the bed will transfer heat through these screws, if this would focus, into the aluminum heat plate, the old one, acting kind of like a heat sink, requiring you to use more electricity to keep the bed hot. It's not much, but you might actually reduce the amount of electricity needed just by a tiny bit. Also, it's very, very rigid. So your bed level in this kind of configuration may actually stay level for a little bit longer than it would on the stock plate because the stock one can expand and contract and kind of flex with the heat that gets transferred into it from these posts. So these may actually be even better, or the carbon fiber bill plate may be even better for maintaining my bed level. Gonna be very, very unforgiving if you crash the nozzle into the bed but that's kind of the risk you play when you're looking for like consistency. Well, the Benchy is complete and yeah, it's my little boat. Does a good job. You know, there's still some things to tune on this printer, retractions, pressure, advance, yada, yada, yada. Still learning clipper, but so far I'm pretty impressed. This is not bad. If you've made it this far into the video, then you were clearly as curious as I was to see if this carbon fiber Y-axis gantry would actually improve anything. So, on this channel, we don't review 3D printers. We review 3D printer components. If you want to see more videos like this in the future, get subscribed. There's more coming. I upload shorts of my progress and I do full length videos of the results. And remember, measure twice, print once.